the Cassiopeia versus Lux game in gold. Um, do you want to go by Scara or what name do you want to go by during this? Uh, just call me Scara. All right. Um, what do you want to focus on the most during this VOD? Uh, well, um, I know it's not the. I know it's not Sorry. the game that you wanted to go over, but like, what, what, which, from what you remember, do you think is important to go um, over? Well, um, uh, early game trading uh, would be nice, uh, and um, also just um, like at what times it's worth leaving your lane because I, I'm not, I'm not sure if I did that this game uh, to a certain extent, but. Um, uh, I did that last game anyways, and uh, yeah, just when there's a good opportunity to roam, um, sort of preparing it and uh, knowing when and where to go. Uh, by the way, just a disclaimer, my map awareness is complete shite, so uh, that's why you might see me just die to something uh, that's on the map. Okay. Uh, um... So to talk about those points really quick, early trading comes to knowing the matchup and then playing the matchup, right? There's like nothing else to it. So in this matchup, if Lux uses her E on minions, she has like a nine second window where she can't do anything to you. Okay. Unless you stand in your minion wave and then she hits you with your E and she hits you with her passive. So why would you stand in your minion wave? The answer is you wouldn't because you're giving your double value. So what does that mean? That means you stand outside the minion wave according to where their jungler will be. So around two minutes, is their jungler gonna be bot side? No, he'll be, look, he will be bot side, but he's not gonna gank you. So you stand towards the bottom half of the map. Around three minutes, are you gonna be on top side? No, because the jungler will be top side, most likely, right? Uh, in this game, because if you look, he's starting here. And you should assume and know where he's starting. Yeah. Um, based on when, when you see their bottom line come into the jungle or come into the lane, or if you see Lux coming from right here. Um, so just, traits. yeah. So play accordingly on the side of the map with the jungler and then know the matchup. How do you know the matchups? You got to play them, ask high elo players, etc. cetera. Um, but not knowing a matchup, like it's, it's a reasonable excuse to lose a matchup. But once you like experience the matchup, and ask somebody better, there's no reason you should ever lose a lane matchup. Um, because you should know exactly what to do. And I guarantee, if you know exactly what to do, the enemy, there's no way they know what to do. Because they didn't put as much effort in before the game happened, like you did. Yeah. Um, okay. So, and then... And also, uh, oh, go ahead. Someone uh, got first blood this game. I don't think it was Lux, though. Uh, okay. I guess that wouldn't change much anyways. Yeah, it doesn't really change anything. But um and then in terms of roaming pressure, um roams happen like a minute and a half in advance. Okay. Um and they can happen spontaneously too. However, they tend to happen about a minute and a half early. Because you should be setting up the wave. You should be trading appropriately. You should be getting vision control so you can roam safely. All that kind of stuff. So if you don't have, if let's say you're gonna run bottom, right, and you don't have this warded or this warded, is it really safe to go there? Maybe. It depends on the situation of the map, but that's something you have to judge. Is it? Can I walk like this? I don't know. If it's seven and a half minutes, is it a good idea to roam at bottom? Probably not, because if your jungler is not around here. Their jungler is going to be around here because they're going to be because the second respawn is about here uh, around that time. Yeah. Um, you have to think about your top laners. Do they have teleports? Who has teleport? Do you know? You should be you should be loosely keeping track of that. Maybe not exact timers, but you should be considering that definitely. Um, okay. Does their mid laner have ghost? Can they follow me easily? Wh what happens if I just sit here instead and fake a roam? So you see, there's all these different factors that you can think about like before roaming and like setting up roams because you can do a lot on the map. Um, but let's say you just want to go for a standard roam, right? You want to go bottom lane because roaming bottom lane tends to be better than top lane. Um, 
you say, okay, I want to go bottom at six and a half minutes. Why do I want to be bottom at six and a half minutes? Well, I'll be level six. Um, I can control the wave. They'll mid probably already based. Actually, no, I'm going to force their mid to base at six minutes. And then I'm going to roam bottom after that because I know their mid laner is based so they can't counter my roam. And they would never expect me to go bottom after I just push the wave or after I force the mid back because I need to back two to get my gold, right? Yeah. So there isn't just like one way to roam basically is the point that I'm getting at because you see like I've mentioned so many different factors and they all play in and you just have to take the information that you have and then actually do it to make it a good call. Yeah, so judge based on what's happening. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes you can just roam without even looking, doing any of that stuff. Because let's say you just push mid in and you say, okay, my bottom line's pushing. That's enough for me to just go bottom and dive. If you're somebody like Echo, that's perfectly possible. If you're somebody like Ari, you can do that really easily. Yeah, there's um, Sandra and so on. Yeah. And that's not to say you can't do it on somebody like Ori, like Cassio, etc. It just takes a little bit extra skill. Or let's say you have a tank support. It's really easy to dive then because your tank will tank it. But let's say you have like Soraka. You know, Soraka's going to be ten or a million feet behind your AD carry and all that kind of stuff. So it's not as easy, blah, blah, blah. Um, so the point is, there's just so many factors you have to consider. Um, did all that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, why are you AFK at the start of the lane? Uh, yeah, that was... Uh, I don't remember as of right now, but I think I had to go and uh, help my mother with something. Okay, don't be AFK uh, at the start of the lane. No, I, I usually aren't. It was a one-time thing. Even, even if you're AFK here, or like here, just don't be AFK here. Um, and I know you just said that it was like a one-time thing, but I'm just going to explain why. Look, yeah. Lux just got an auto-attack. She has wave priority now. Especially in Lux versus Cassio. And when you're playing Cassio, you don't want to be here to here. Look at this range, okay? You don't want you don't want to be that. You want to be here before the mini wave even spawns. Like sorry, before the mini wave like um lines up. And you want to be zoning them off the mini wave like this. Around here. Okay. Or here. Because these minions aren't going to aggro you if you just E them. Yeah, so you can just get... It Lux, you mean, right? What'd you say? You mean if I E Lux, right? Yes, if you E Lux. Yeah. yeah. So you already played level one wrong, and I know you said you were AFK because whatever reason, but like, this is something you should be doing in games. Um, yeah, I'm usually not that far forward, so that's uh, a good thing you're saying. Okay, so she got three auto attacks before you get one. So even if you guys use no abilities, she will have push control. And see, now you're using abilities and she's not. So that's why you have um, a, what is what perceives as wave control. Okay. Your Lux versus Cassio. Why are you standing near your mini wave? Uh... That's a good question. Uh, I guess it's just I wasn't paying it, like thinking about it, um, which I should have. So if she throws her E like this, she hits you, and she pushes the wave. That's what I call double value, right? Like, Yeah, win-win. You need to look at mana and spells as they can do two things. One, I can trade mana and a cooldown for health or I can trade mana and a cooldown for wave control okay so let's say they decide to do wave control what does this mean this means that you have more HP um, HP mana so now you can force a trade because she has a cooldown right you don't yeah. as long as your wave isn't cleared you can then force a trade. Or you can use your mana to try to thin the wave. 
Okay. Let's say they traded for your health. Now you have two options again. You can counter trade if you win, or you can control the wave. Do you see how each scenario is different? Yeah. Okay. Those are four just things that happen when trading, right? And because, because of, go ahead. Uh, and because of where I'm standing, I'm giving her the chance to both have wave control and win the trade. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why I call it the double value because you get both of these, right? You have a cooldown, but you make them lose health and you force them to have to clear the wave. Now let's say instead of being level one, let's say she's level seven and you're doing the same thing. Well, now your minion wave is going to die basically immediately. You will be lower on health. Her minion wave will be pushing into you and she'll get a free roam or a free vision control or whatever because you stood in your minion wave. All because of just that one pathing thing. She gets so much map pressure. And look, you see, let's say from here to here. How many units is this? Um, Tans uh, it's about know. 100. It's about one Teemo, okay. right? But that's not important. Right, yeah. But you see how, how important these 100 units are? Yeah. Because if you're here, she can, she can throw it like this now, right? And in this exact situation, you would have to actually have to be like this instead. But if you're in this second circle, there's no way she hits both of you guys, both the minions and the creeps. But, um, I mean, obviously you can adjust it to your needs, right? So instead of being here, you're over here now. How does she hit you and the minions? She doesn't. So I was just trying to make an example of how important just a small amount of units is. Um, but does that kind of all that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, also, you might honestly just want to keep this diagram, like screenshot it, because that's really important to know. Um, you, you don't even need to screenshot it. Just keep it in mind. Um, I would just highly recommend knowing that stuff because those are the basics of wave control, of trading. Um, obviously, it gets much, much, much more in depth based on matchup, based on this, based on that. But those general rules right there pretty much apply to any matchup um and that's why i tried to leave it as general as possible that way you could apply it to as many things as possible instead of um you know a matchup specific thing yeah i guess it also plays into the um, my struggling with uh, lux matchups often because I mean, she has uh, like a wide ray away than most other mages. Uh, and the point you made about me standing forward in the start of the lane, uh, I guess that would sort of neutralize my problem to a large extent. Yeah, it would help. I wouldn't say it would neutralize it completely, but it would definitely help. Um, yeah. So, so let's talk about a specific matchup where being at the front of the lane is super, super, super important. Okay. Do you know how Echo plays lane? Uh, Q push? Yeah, Q push. Yeah. Okay, it takes two Qs and three auto attacks to clear the wave level one is Echo. Or actually, it might be six auto attacks. Either way. If you can deny him access to that, why would you not do it? Is there a good reason to not want to no. force him out of his win condition? No. Absolutely not. So do it, right? And you have to know this kind of stuff. So if, you, if you're if you AFK level 1 against Echo, you actually deserve to lose the game. Because you're not punishing him when he's literally a potato. Okay. Okay? He's useless level 1. And I'm just illustrating, again, a point to just show you how important it is. Because... Echo's Q does like 60 damage level 1, right? And then it does like 70 damage on return, let's say. Those are pretty yeah. pretty high numbers. Like, um, generous, I would say. But, um, if you, if the minion wave is here and here, 
Echo is going to do this. He's going to walk up and he is going to stand here and he is going to queue. Right? That's what's going to happen. Yeah. Okay, so what do good Echoes do? Well, but before the mini wave is even coming, like at this point, you see how the mini wave is now? Yeah. Echo is already right here. Because then he just walks up, throws a queue, backs up, and then waits four seconds, throws another queue, auto attacks, auto attacks, waves dead. And you didn't punish him. Because you yeah. can't anymore. Because you already let him get wave control once he threw this first queue. From that point on, you lose level one, you lose level two, because he's going to get level two before you are. You lose 40% of your health to minions, etc. Okay? Super, 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 super important for level one. Like, people, like, just tend to think, like, oh, it's just level one. But no, level one literally can dictate a laning phase. Because now once Echo does that, you're down on you're down on a health pot. Because you have, like, unless you just want to sacrifice six creeps. So you decide, is your health pot worked worth six creeps? I don't know. It depends. Um, yeah. And then after that, Echo's just going to walk up and do the same thing again. Because now he has wave control. So you see how important level one can be. It's just the, the point that I was illustrating with that example. Um, let's say Lux had a brain. Right now, she actually would not E these. Because another mini wave is coming up. So she wants it for the next mini wave. So instead, she just auto attacks this one, waits for this mini wave to then stack right here, fat as heck right here because these two minions are still alive because you haven't killed them. So now they're all going to be stuck here. And then she just throws her E right here. Guess how much wave control she just gets? All of it. Yeah. How do you answer six mini waves plus two? You can't as Cassio. So see, you you're... You. Yeah, now, now you just have to be F in your turret. Yeah. So we just talked about this before we started this VOD, right? But you see how um, your lack of action causes you to be AFK in the turret. Because, I, honestly, I hope she does it. I, she probably won't. But th that's what she should be doing right now. Um, but you see that scenario I just drew out, how she forces you under turret. Because you are not auto-attacking this. You're not auto-attacking this. You let her get three auto-attacks early. You're like, oh, well, it's only three auto-attacks. But three auto-attacks level one, that's huge. Huge, 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 huge. That's 150 damage. How do you output 150 damage level one? You can't. Of wave push, that is. So, yeah. really important. It's just the point I'm illustrating. And the reason I'm spending so yeah. much time on this is because, again, early trading. So, what um, questions about that do you have? Or what other um, concerns with level one would you like to talk about? Well, it's just, I mean, uh, there's not really anything uh in specific per se it's just that uh you'll probably notice a lot of uh points at which i could have uh, either forced a trade with her or um you know just thrown out something uh to allow myself more pressure uh but i don't always notice these opportunities and i don't always see which ones are uh potentially good for me uh so i I more sporadically, I think, I just jump out into random trades when I feel like it. Um, more so than actually, you know, judging the situation properly and uh, knowing how the outcome could benefit me. Okay. Um, do you watch LCS? Uh, I watch a bit of LCS. Okay. I want you to watch one LCS game this next week. Just one. Okay. And I want you to focus right. only on when people take trades. All right. Okay? Like, have a note sheet if you need to. You need to watch a game of LCS, and you need to say, why are they not trading? Why are they auto-attacking the minion? Why are they stepping here? Okay? Why are they here and not here? It, you know, you can, like, be as like, ridiculous as you want. You can say, hey, why are they standing here and not all the way here? Okay. Well, okay, the reason behind that is if I'm standing here, then these minions are going to target me, she's going to target me, these minions are going to target me. I'll literally just get crushed. Okay, so that one's stupid obvious, right? But why is he standing here versus here? This is only maybe 600 units. Big difference, though. 
big difference. And this is this is just getting you to actively think. Okay. Um, yeah. because high elo players have every step in mind. And even if they don't actively think about it, it's because they've grinded it out so many games that they just know it passively. So right. if I if I were to draw this out, you should not be standing here. Yeah. You should be standing here. Like I said earlier. Do you know why? Yeah. Uh well, uh I guess first of all it's to avoid the E, of course. Um uh, but second, I guess um I guess it just pushes Lux to move away. I don't know. So, don't have a great um answer to that question. Okay. So the reason you stand here versus here is to avoid a jungle gank. But but you'll say, oh well if Gragas is bottom side at two minutes, I should be standing here because I know he's bottom side, so I want to be on the opposite side of him. No. It's right, but it's wrong. If you stand here, you're still ungankable and you give them less information. Because let's say you go from here to here. What does this mean? If I see my enemy laner walk from here to here, I'm tipped off. I know for a fact that the enemy jungler is over here. Okay, yeah, because I sort of push her towards that side. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know the lane seesaw, right? It goes like this. Okay, you draw a line. If she walks like this, you're going to walk like this. Yeah. Okay. So, in high elo play, if I see Miami laner do this, she's trying to force me over here. That is what no, she's no, trying no. to do. Assuming that she's stronger. Yeah. And let's say I have vision control here. Well, then she's just stupid, and then I just walk into her and trade her. Because she just closed the uh, distance for me. And let's say, again, I have control word here. Okay, well, then I'm good. Right? But, like, it's just about taking the information that you have and then making an educated decision or assumption. Because let's say she does this exact movement at three minutes. Does it mean anything? Probably no. not. No. Well, not be in this elo, anyways. Because we know that their top, their jungler is going to be topside. Because we saw her starting, we saw him starting bot side. Yeah. Okay. But let's say she does, she does this at five minutes. Guess what? I'm hell of a lot more cautious now. In fact, I might go here, drop a ward. I might sit on this side of the lane, drop a ward over here. But you see how all that just came from thinking, right? Like. Yeah. Have you ever considered that fact that somebody could force you to walk a direction so you get ganked? Yeah. Okay, further. Uh, I actually have. <laughs> okay, good. Let's say Lux throws her E here. You better be ready on your flash. Okay. In case. Because. Shows up from the brush next yeah. Thing, because look, he forces you into this zone. Right? Because you, yeah. you're not going to walk here. You're going to walk like this. Or like this. Or like this, right? No. Well, if their jungler is right here, you see how the, her Q forces you in this direction. Or this direction. Or this direction. Yeah. Or back to your turret. Either way, you concede pressure or you get ganked. Okay, now on the flip side of this, this is all stuff that the enemy could be doing, right? But people say, oh, well, I'm low elo. People don't do this. Okay, that's fine. If they don't do that, whatever. Then they're stupid for not doing it. But now it's on you to do that type of stuff. Yeah. Because I just explained it all to you. You know of it all now. There's no excuse for you to not do stuff like that. So around three minutes, if you're not on this side of the lane, forcing them onto this side of the lane, you have made a mistake. Okay. Because your jungler is topside. That gives you the highest probable gank of, or highest probable chance of getting a gank. So um, you're looking for me to do that now in three minutes? Yeah. Just force yeah. her onto that side. Let's cross our fingers. I mean, you're not going to do it. Obviously. Like, you probably won't do it. But, um, and I'm not going to mention it if you don't, because we just talked through it. But... You see how you can actively force somebody to do something 
or let's say they don't come to this side, like I said. Well, now, because she didn't move, you've closed distance, you cue her, you dodge like this to dodge her cue, and then you just ear her to death. Because you, okay. you dodged her cue. Or even if you don't dodge her cue, you have cleanse. Use cleanse. What's the point of taking a summer spell if you're not going to use it? You're way stronger than her at level 3. Yeah, I usually take cleanse, um, and I prioritize using it defensively, which is probably just, I should probably just use it um, if it's worth using it for like half her health, and I should probably use it more, but I often just use it uh, or save it for uh, me getting caught, for instance. Yeah, so start thinking about all the tools you have and stop looking at them as de defense versus offense. So if you look at Zonia's, right? You're, you'd say, wow, this is a defensive item. Guess what it isn't? <laughs> it's both. You can use it offense or you can use it as defense. And an obvious, obvious, obvious example um, is... Messiah. Is who? Messiah. What do you mean? Uh, the, the TF uh, oh. ultimate. Okay, yeah, that, uh, th that that's perfect. I was going to say something else, yeah. but that's perfect. Okay, TF. He ults in to five people. In the zone. Stuns their carry, guess what? Um, they're least in, they can then make a flash play, whatever. You see how having the Zonia is enabled an offensive play, even though the item is inherently defensive? Yeah. It's the same thing for literally everything. Start thinking about cleanse like that. Can I enable myself to get ahead with cleanse? Can I enable myself to get ahead with flash? And is it worth it? Okay, because let's say you flash for a kill on Lux. Is it worth Honestly, probably not, because if Gragas is good, he will then come flash on you, and you will be dead. So don't burn your flash aggressively in this matchup. Now let's say instead they have like Shivana and, and I'm trying to think of the lowest pressure mid laner possible. Uh, and Ziggs, okay? Let's say they have these two. Can you flash forward now? Probably. Because they're not going to counter punish you most likely. Because you can just ward properly to negate Shivana. Okay. Okay. So I've covered a lot, right? And it's two minutes in the game. So do you have any questions about the stuff that I've covered so far? Um. Well, I mean, nothing like very specific. It's just um, I'm honestly just thinking to myself about the times when I flash for a kill, whether or not it's worth it. Yeah, I mean, that was just one example. So don't think of it as just Flash. Think about it as other things, too. So you'll look at Cassiopeia R, right? And you'll say, wow, that's a great counter engage, right? Yeah. Well, what if you just use it for a, a huge slow and burst damage? Most people don't think of Cassiopeia as a huge slow burst damage mage, right? You want to say, no. oh, wow, I want to get the stun off. But guess what? It also does this. This is another function of Cassiopeia R. Okay, so let's say you're here versus Lux, right? Um, you're here, and Lux is here. If you land a Q, you can kill her, assuming you're level and 6. Just because if you, if you Q, E, walk forward slightly, W, E, R, E, 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 or E, Q, E, 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 etc., how, like, she has to respect you and flash away. She can't not flash away from you. Because, let's say she throws a Q, right? You have cleanse. What is she going to do yeah, to you? That actually, <clears throat> that actually is quite uh, valid. You probably covered it before, but uh, me, like many other gold players, uh, don't use uh, our ultimates just to burn a flash. We want the full kill. So I guess that's something I need to uh, start thinking more about. So if, if you look at this combo, right? Okay. Yeah. Let's look at the start, right? You hit a Q and you hit a E. Okay. You, you path forward, like I said. So I'll put path here. If you land W, you can E and R at the same time. And now they're just slowed for an eternity. And right now, after up to here, they're probably like... 30% health. So if yeah. they don't flash, you kill them. 
Like the second they get off of your ground, your miasma. And if they do flash, you just used a two minute cooldown for a five minute cooldown. And they're so gankable. And you push the wave and base. That's going to take you a good 20 seconds. Then you have to recall another 10 seconds. This is 30 seconds. And then you leave base. 30 seconds back to lane. Look at this. This is a whole minute of downtime. Right? Where you're not pressuring anything. Okay? So guess what? Your alt only has an effective cooldown of 60 seconds. Oh. Right. Okay, now, now now let's further extend that. If if you were to um let's say your alt's on cooldown for 60 seconds. Do you know how many waves that is before you can use your ultimate? Two? Three? Two waves. Three? It's two waves. Two. Yeah. yeah, you were right. Um <laughs> So with that in mind, let's say they have their alt and you don't have their alt. And you don't have your alt. Why don't you just wave clear those two waves, assuming you guys are equal strength? Right, so let's say, let's say you're like Cass versus Syndra, right? Super explosive matchup. You have no R. She has R. That means if you two all in each other, she will win. So why don't you just not all in her and clear the wave instead? Well, you... Uh... I just blew your mind, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. See, all this just comes from thinking about the game. Right? Like, nothing that I just said was like, it took like a rocket science to figure out. It was just no. super simple stuff. And here's the thing. I can spit this information at you for literally like four to five hours, at least. D minimum. Honestly, I could talk for at least a, like a full 24 hour period. Just about stupid small things in League of Legends. Like, hey, did you know that if you're playing Orianna, you can put your ball on this pixel right here where 50% of the ball is covered and the ball will be invisible? No. Well, okay, well, that's the thing. Ball. You can put it here, 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 here. Any terrain, you can put a ball in. It'll be invisible. Did you know that? No. No. I didn't expect you to know that one. That's why I used it as an example. <laughs> but how did I figure that out? I spent an hour in a custom game playing Orianna. Okay, just walking through the map, doing cool things. Whatever I wanted to do. I was like, oh, okay, I'm just, I'm just going to walk through the map, do stuff. Um, how do I clear minion wave as Orianna? Okay, well, I figured it out. You have to do this, this, these spells, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I figured out my, my combo. The most efficient combo to clear the waves. Okay, and then I was like, hmm. What is my alt cooldown? Okay, I just used it. It's 70 seconds at this rank because X, Y, Z. What if I have 40% cooldown at level 13 or level 16? Oh, well, it's only a 54 second cooldown. Wow, that's less than a minute. That's only two mini waves. Wow. Okay, so you see how I just like compared it to other stuff? Yeah. And again, it didn't take some genius to do all this. It just takes the time and active thinking to try to apply all of it and learn. And that's just something that'll be common throughout this VOD review is that nothing I say is going to be like, wow, why aren't you faker mechanics outplaying this guy like this, doing this, 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 that? Because that's not how you climb ELO. You don't have no, to be... The small things. Yeah, it's just, well, okay. I would argue that all the small things, knowing all the small things is actually just one big thing. And that's understanding League of Legends and... Um... Like, I don't you can break the game into, like, rotations, micro, waves, um, general management, objectives, um, power spikes. I can keep listening, right? And each yeah. of these is a big category, right? You would consider each of these, like, super important. Yeah. But I don't consider them each as super, super, super important as super big categories. I just say, guess what? This is all just un under understanding the game. And this right here is the one that you need to focus on. See how these are all just like smaller objectives towards understanding the game? Yeah. And that's how I look at it. 
you might not have to look at it that way. But that when, you, good way to look at it. when you look at it like that, you open up your perspective so much because you say, right now, if I ask you the question, how many hours of League of Legends have you played? Uh, quite a few, um, um, I guess. I mean, I would say about like 600 hours. Okay, minimum. 600 hours. We're going to use that number as a base. How many hours have you actually played League of Legends? None. And by that, I mean actually actively thought about everything in League of Legends, every single power window, every single item breakpoint, every single control board, every single pathing, every single item buy that you buy, every single cooldown, all that. How many hours? None. Yeah. Like zero. Like zero. So that is the amount of time that you've actually played League of Legends. Right there. And that is why somebody can be Bronze 5 with a million games. Because there's a difference between playing League of Legends and playing League of Legends. Right? I know that doesn't actually make sense if you just take it at face value. That was deep. But if you take it as a metaphor... Playing League of Legends and playing League of Legends are two completely different things. Um, So, further, how I told you to watch one LCS game, that is my next homework assignment for you to do, okay? I want you to play one game of League of Legends tomorrow or whenever you next have time. Yeah. And just one game. Think about everything. See what happens. Yeah. Okay, even if it's a normal game. It doesn't matter. Um, think about every single thing that goes on. And then think, why is this happening? I guarantee you will learn something new. Um, I most definitely will. And then, after you do that, in future games that you play, don't think about everything. Because you're going to be way too overwhelmed to think about everything. Because when I first started playing, I wasn't thinking about everything. And then when I actually tried to think about everything, I was like, I was way too stressed on knowing every exact detail. How many minions do I need in this wave to do this? How, wh- why am I warding here versus warding there? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? Why am I doing this? this? Okay. I was just like, wow, this is way too overwhelming. Because it's so much information, as you can probably already tell based on our 40 minutes of discussion already. But... Yeah. If you, for one game, focus only on active thinking on your vision, I guarantee you will learn something about vision. And it's not going to be strenuous because you're only thinking about one thing. Maybe the next game, you think only about early trading. I guarantee you'll learn something. As long as you're actively thinking and not just saying like, wow, GG, I'm playing Lux. And they're playing Cassio. They're just going to run at me. GG. What did you just learn? You just learned that Cassiopeia is strong as hell level 1. Why are you trying to fight Cassiopeia level 1? Yeah. Right? Th- that is knowledge right there. Because right now, you're here. Why are you not here in her face? E, auto, 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 E, or E, 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 auto, E, E, auto. Why are you not doing this? Oh. Uh. Because I'm not thinking about it. Because you're not thinking about it. Yeah. Because if you think about it right now, who wins if you do this? Me. You do. So why are you not doing it? Right? Like, (laughs) again, nothing that I'm saying is overly complex. I'm not telling you to memorize formulas about minions. I'm not telling you to do anything that's like, wow, I need to have 500 APM. It's just, I need to have knowledge. And that's how you become a better League of Legends player. Right there, just summed up. If you want to be a good League of Legends player, to anybody that's watching, think. I guarantee you will climb ELO. Guaranteed. Because I know for a fact, your enemy is not thinking. (laughs) (laughs) Um, That's why they're with me. Exactly. That's why they're in X ELO. Because they're not thinking. Why do you think players can get rank 1? They're thinking. And they might not be actively thinking about all this stuff, like I just told you to do, 
Because guess what? They did all that hard work, all the homework in the past. So now it's just their first reaction to automatically think that stuff. And sometimes I catch myself. So I'm like, oh, hey, why? Like, I'm here at three minutes. I'm actually trolling. And then I immediately just walk to the other side. But me actively recognizing my mistake makes me fix it, right? And, th and that's what happens. But for the most majority of games, if the bottom, if my David jungler starts here, I am always here. Yeah. Always. Because I already know for a fact their jungler will be here around three minutes. So why would I be here? It's actually inting to be there. And this is one thing that I talked to somebody else about, Paddock. And he was like, whoa, dude, you're actually ungankable if you do that correctly. I'm like, yeah, it's insane. Um... And that's why I have so much respect for LCS junglers because all their player, all the people they're playing against know the paths. They know where the enemy jungler will be. They know how the enemy jungler ganks, etc. But still, enemy junglers can still get ganks off. And that's why I think jungle is so hard. <laughs> but anyway, um, okay. Again, I just rambled for another like 15 minutes. Do you have any other questions on all that? Mm, okay, I'm a tiny one. Yeah, sure. There, uh, I mean, there are exceptions to uh, <clears throat> this, uh, well, at least in this CLO, because uh, it's been trending to play Twitch jungle. Okay. And he always level two cheeses. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I'm aware of it, but at that point, I guess it's better to forfeit uh, some pressure to negate the gank. Yeah. Or... Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, so um... <clears throat> let's use this exact example. You're Casio vs. Lux, level 1. The enemy jungler is Twitch. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to analyze the situation and say, I'm Casio vs. Lux, okay? I win 1v1. What are, the prob what are the odds that I can kill her before Twitch comes mid? Low. So instead of pushing and standing up here, I'm going to stand here. And I'm going to let her get wave control. Or I will even stand in my minion wave. Force a trade so that she ease me. And then it pushes towards me. And now the wave is here. So I sacrificed, let's say, one health potion for the minion wave to be here. Level 3. Oh. Level 2, level 3. How does Twitch gank me? He can't. It is actually impossible. Actually, I... I mean, uh, I only did it one game because I was, as you said, actively, actively thinking about it. But I awarded uh, uh, just uh, next to the early trading over the wall there. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, uh, I mean, because I knew it was starting red. Uh, yeah, every so every Twitch is going to level two gank time. after red. That yeah. Like, they are going to. So, instead of saying, wow, GG, Twitch level two broken, ha ha ha. Why don't you just play to the fact that you're going to get level two ganked? Yeah, so I, but uh, at that time I actually did manage to uh, counter it somehow by warding over there, so I could see him walking in. Yeah, definitely. So I knew when to back off. So, but that was like a one-time thing. Okay, now do that for every single aspect of the game, and you'll be challenger. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah. But, but seriously, on that note, like, um. You have to analyze the enemy as much as you an analyze you to say, what are they going to do? What can they do? Even if they don't do it. So let's say I look at the jungle matchup, right? And let's say instead of this matchup, it's Lee Sin versus Elise. This is going to be one spicy as hell level three. Like, these two are going to duke it out. You're going to duke it out. There's going to be ganks everywhere. Okay, so now let's say we're going to assume that both junglers go mid. Who wins in this matchup? Uh, Lee? In, in, oh, oh, right. in these four. Castillo versus Lux. Yeah, but uh, I guess Castillo and Lee wins uh, versus at least Lux. Yes, assuming that you play it properly and you don't get hit by a cocoon before Lee is around you. Yeah. Okay. So if that's the case, 
why don't you say, hey jungler, stay around mid level 3, and then 2v2, win the 2v2, now you win the game. Oh. If they stay around mid and you win the 2v2, you win the game. Right? Like that, that in yeah. theory is how it should work. Okay. So then say, hey, teammate, do it. And if they don't do it, then you just adjust accordingly and say, hey, I'm just going to concede wave pressure because I don't want to die to this gank because the risk of me dying to gank. Okay. What happens if you die to the gank? You lose 300 gold plus probably another 200 gold on the wave plus experience plus they have experience plus um she has items now okay now compare this to i play aggro and trade 20 percent of health bars what is the potential benefit of of that second option uh, because if I trade in my wave, uh, it will push into me, uh, negating the chance for Elise to gank me. And I mean, even though I concede some wave pressure, I also um, put Lux under pressure and um, uh, the chance. Of, yeah, I well, yeah, I can't get ganked, and she has to be more careful because she's pushed me. Right. So you just said the proper um, analysis of the scenario. But what risk, or sorry, what do you gain out of trading 20% of your health HP bar, assuming the wave stays even? Um, what do you actually gain? I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> Nothing. Oh. Because you can't kill her. Yeah. Because their jungle is around. So you actually don't gain anything. And then if you do what you just said, where it's you let her push a little bit, this risk goes away. And now everything is okay. And then you're still stronger in 1v1. Okay, so now after this scenario, it goes into this event. And then you're in a 1v1 now because you saw both junglers are top lane. And now you can force a 1v1 and then now you're ahead. Because you just took the situation and made it how you wanted it oops all right right did did that make sense there so yeah so both junglers show top that means that the jungler is not mid that means you are stronger in 1v1 that means you should go in and force a 1v1 make sense yeah okay so when people say like oh well aren't there formulas to league Yes, there are formulas to League of Legends. And they're important to know. However, it's like, if... You, have you taken calculus? No. Okay, if I gave you a formula sheet of calculus, is it going to help you? No. Absolutely not, because you don't understand anything about calculus. So guess what? You have the formulas... But you don't understand the base math. You don't, you, don't, you don't understand the subject at all. So, sure, you might be able to get a few formulas proper, right? You might be able to say, oh, well, I, in this word problem, I have A, B, and C. And in this formula, there's A, B, and C. So, if I just plug them in, it's going to work. That, I mean, that happens in League 2. But now let's make the formula more complex oh there's actually the derivative of a and then you know this that this that and then you're like oh well actually i have no idea what to do so it all just builds upon this base knowledge and when people like ask for mentoring and they're like hey in this scenario what should i have done it's really really hard to give a good answer because unless you're in the game and actively thinking you don't have all the information okay so so let's talk about item builds just super quickly right yeah. Let's let's look at this game to knock two in one stone. What do, what should you build? Well, what I did build at least was tear a rod. Um, rod? And I Yeah. Needless large and, rod. No, rod of the oh, ages. Oh, okay, yeah. And I um 
not sure if I went for Banshees uh, or Haunting Guys or uh, Morello, but uh, I think I finished another item before I finished the Seraphs. I'm not sure though. Yeah, um, I don't have that great memory. Do you know Casio's optimal build? Well, uh, not really, because when I've looked through pro builds, I've only seen Tiaroa lately. Yeah, then everything else changes, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's because all that is flex stuff. So if you look, this is your core build right here. This should happen every single game, okay? Okay. Now if you look, assuming you are even or ahead, do you know the next item that you want? Can you guess? Morello? Exactly. Okay. So this is the next item. Do you know the next item? Um, well, I would assume either Leandris or um, Banshees or Sonya's, depending on matchups. No. Know. Okay. If you are ahead, Seraphs. If you are ahead enough that the enemy matches, it doesn't matter. Seraphs. All if right. you are ahead, if, and if you're not, Void Staff. Okay, so no uh, hunting guys? No. Why do you need hunting guys? Unless their tank line is like Shen, Gragas, Zack. Oh, I thought the flat pen was uh, more beneficial than... Flat pen's flat only good if you get two flat pen items. But you can't get two oh. flat pen because you're Cassiopeia. Okay. And so by, then, this, uh, by this time in the game, your flat pen is worthless. Then you definitely shouldn't look through my OPGG. Well, right, but like... It, it see it doesn't matter with your OVG, right? Just the point is, I'm just I'm just showing you like a formula, right? Because this is an example yeah. of one of those formulas where people say, "Hey, what should I build here?" Well, so let's say that they have th three magic resist items at immediately after you finish these items. Are you still gonna get Morello's next? Um. <laughs> the answer is no because now you need void staff earlier because they have three managers this items already so i need that void staff to do damage so you see how like there there's a formula but you have to know so many different derivatives or different um um extensions of that formula to be able to make the optimal play yeah so, so Cassio's ideal build is this. Assuming everything goes well, this is what she's going to build in this order. Um, this is her ideal build. Okay? This gives you the maximum amount of damage possible while being tanky. Holy sh... My dog's dude. Okay. But look at this order, right? What would be the last item in this case? Rabidons. Yeah, but th there's another spot. No. Is there? Row of Morales, Sarah, Floyd, Brad. One, two, three, four. Okay, five. There won't be a last item. Okay. <laughs> the game the game shouldn't go that long. Just go for the flasks. <laughs> uh, I mean, last item you can build, like, Zonia's would be ideal, I think. Okay. Or, I mean, actually, it would be, I guess, Ludens, even. Because this is assuming that you're ahead. So this would be, like, I guess, ideal. Yeah. Right? Like, this is this is assuming that you're, like, so insanely far ahead that you've done everything properly, you're winning so insanely hard. And you won't make any mistakes on work. And you're not going to make any mistakes ever. Yeah. This okay. This is the dream build. This, yeah, this is, like, the dream build. Okay, so now let's actually relook the situation. They have uh, Fiora... And now they have, um, actually, no, let's, let's grab this. They have Jarvan, Warwick, I spelled that wrong, and Caitlyn. Okay. Well, now Luden yeah. sucks, like, super bad, because you're now you're not super far ahead. You're just, like, you're doing okay. So now Zonia is significantly better. All right, now let's say they have Lux and um, 
Luck support with Twisted Fate mid. I don't know, right? And you yeah. didn't take cleanse for whatever reason because you were trolling. Or let's see you AFK and champ select. All right, now you see how good Banshees is, right? Yeah. Okay. Is uh, Quicksilver Sash ever... Yes, I build uh, Quicksilver all the time. Okay. Honestly, I would probably get QSS over Banshees. Um... But yeah, this is like this is like dream build, right? This is like holy, I'm so insane. Now, what does an average build look like? Okay, it goes tier into Roa, into now. Here's a deciding point of Morellos and Seraphs. You go Morellos if you're ahead. You go Seraphs if you're behind, and then you go other, other one of these or Void Staff, and then Rabidons. Would Sonya's fit into the Morella Seraphs uh, bracket? Yes. Okay. I was going yeah, to add that in sure. as an addendum next. Um, but you you pretty much your ideal is you want to be looking for that Morellas. You want to be looking at that Seraphs, and then you want to get the one that you don't after that. But Let's like the okay. So the reason I put other and then void is let's say those three managers decide him against again. Now void staff trumps that one. Okay. Because you need that damage. Because getting void staff will do more damage than getting seraphs. Okay. Let's say you're gonna so, get one shot because they're ahead and you need that shield. Oh, okay. Well, then you need seraphs before Morellos because who cares if you're doing damage if you're dead? Because you're not gonna do any damage then. Yeah. But so in, in this game, there's a potential that Void would be better because they have three tanks? Uh, yes. I would definitely be looking for a third item Void staff. Okay. Or, sorry, fourth item after Morello's. But, I mean, it really depends, right? Because I would be playing the game differently than you would be playing it. So I would probably be ahead, you know, because I'm abusing the fact that I'm Cassiopeia and I know my champion. Yeah. Whereas I have a feeling that you're not going to abuse it very much. So now your itemization is going to be completely thrown off because you don't have the gold necessary because you're not farming the side waves like you mentioned to me before. You're not, you know, um, getting kills. You're not doing all that stuff um, that I would be doing. So that's why it's hard when people say like, hey, um, what build should I have gone? Because it really just depends on everything. Well... How fed is the Gragas? Because if Gragas is really fed, you need a Morellos really early. Because you need to cut his healing. Let's say their tanks okay. build three managers items. Oh, now I need an earlier Void Staff. Let's say Lux is insanely fed. I actually might need a Banshees earlier. And the only reason Banshees over QSS is because you have Cleanse. Right. Oh, let's say Jin is super fed. Like Jin and Udyr, they're so insanely fed. I might even get a Dead Man's. Oh, didn't even know that was a potential. Yeah, you get movement speed and armor and health, and you never lose this forty to sixty movement speed. I don't remember the number because you're never yeah, an auto attack. You don't attack. Yeah. yeah. So you see, when people ask these binary questions of, hey, what should I have done? The answer is, honestly, I can't tell you an optimal build because I wasn't in the game. Yeah, it just depends on how you play it. Yeah, and the whole point of all this discussion is literally just to say, start thinking about the game. I've spent literally an hour just illustrating the point <laughs> to, to think about the game. That's an hour well spent, so... Yeah, definitely. Um... But you can you can clearly see now. This is why I hate doing OPG re OPGD reviews because like yeah. let's say somebody's like, oh, can you just give me some information on how to improve? Well, I'm literally going to tell you the same five statements that I tell everybody: CS better, stop dying, stop playing these champions, your items suck, and your um, what was the other one? I don't uh, remember the other one. But anyway, I don't know, some of the um, variation or something. Yeah, something, something, something. It doesn't even matter. But the point is, I guarantee you just learned a million times more things in this one hour than if I spent half an hour on somebody with their OPGG. Yeah. Um, and I know that's an unfair time comparison, but let's say we take half an hour versus half an hour. I guarantee you learn a million more things in just this game. 
All right, so I'm going to continue. That way this ends at a reasonable time. Um, so <laughs> don't... I, I'll probably do less in-depth of this laning stuff that I normally do because all that was an hour. Um, because I think we covered a lot of it by talking about the stuff that we did. So, like, for yeah. example, why are you not here? And why am I standing in my menu wave? Why are you standing in your menu wave? Why did you ward this? Uh, I really don't know. This ward I sucks, right? Like, well, you warded this at two twenty. Okay. Yeah. I can't see the timer on it. This is gonna last for another forty seconds. It's gonna expire at three minutes. What ward does this? What does this give you at three minutes? Is the jungler gonna be here at three minutes? A slow clearing jungler like Gragas. He probably backs before that anyone. Or. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to get anything by by three minutes. This information gives you nothing. Extend it out. Go here and instead. I also play. Uh, I play on the opposite side of where I warded. No, that's fine be for this case because, like I said, remember, oh, you have okay. to stand over here. Um, so, yeah, but that word sucks. And again, I expl <laughs> we explained why. Um, so just try to remember everything that I've already said when going through this VOD review. Um, cause I'm going to speed it up just a little bit, like, you know, not pause for everything. Um, yeah. so, okay. No, yeah, that was bad. So you have to start dodging this stuff. Yeah. Let me switch the vision now. Okay, so we saw Gragas top. And at this point, it's not worth for me trying to follow that, is it? It depends. Um, I don't know because this isn't a first-person VOD, so you're so you're not looking here, obviously, yeah, because it's an RFL file. But it depends. Are you, are you looking here? You just no. said no. If yeah, you're looking I'm not, here, um, uh, I'm pretty sure I didn't see that. If you're okay, well, you should be looking there. Once you see him on the map, you need to hover over him to see his mana, his health bar, because that's really important. And if you manage this way, this lane properly, this will not be in your turret. This will be here, more like yeah. this or like this. And then if the wave's like this, guess what? You can go roam here and you can kill him. But because you yes. did not manage the wave properly in the early game, directly as a result of you don't go get that kill. Okay, so my level one just basically gave up that free kill. Yes, that was a free kill right there. Because you can go there, and at the very least, you can force him to back, or you kill him. Yeah. All down to the level one. Yeah. Um, so see, you, you might not even ever notice that, right? But see how just of an effect, just even five seconds on the game has. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, right now, this is the point that I illustrated before the VOD. Um, you should be looking at their minion's health bar because she can shove this wave in like this. So this is how you fix this yeah. lane CS thing. If you look at the minions right now, which ones can you last in under turret? Um, I'll I'll, I'll um, label them in different colors. Um, so I can last hit the um, the yellow one and the red one, but the blue one I need to prepare. Exactly. So right now you should be looking to fix this minion's health bar. Okay. Right, like this is the thing where it's like you do it before it becomes an issue, because let's say you don't hit this minion at all. And then all these go into turret. 
Now it's a lot harder to get this minion because you didn't do it before it was a problem. Yeah. Okay. So see, look, you could have autoed, you could have autoed, you could have autoed. Don't walk oh. in straight lines. <laughs> you don't have mana to do this trade. Okay. So this is the thing that I mentioned earlier. Um, her health bar is like this, right? Yeah, and it was like her. this. You just did 20% of her health for 100% of your mana. Or we'll look at it like this. You did 50, um, like 50 percent of her health for 100 percent of your mana. Is this trade worth it? No. No. Why is it not worth it? Um, because I give up. Uh, uh, like uh, I basically give up all my pressure, so she can just push freely and uh, not be scared of me aggressing on her. Yes. However, if you look at her mana bar, she can't control the wave either. So the wave should be stuck here, provided that you were auto-attacking the mini wave to clear it earlier and not um, just walking around. But it's not worth because your jungler is bottom side. Okay. If your jungler is here, is it worth it? Yes. Uh, I, I can't see. Oh. Um, if your jungler is on raptors... Is it worth it? Oh, yeah. Well, then it could be Maybe. It. Now, now it might be worth it. Because if your jungler comes here, forces her flash, now it's worth. So you see how it's like, everything is just so conditional. And yeah. you really have to just consider everything. Um, let's, let's assume no jungler ever comes. This trade sucks. Because now, she can force you to be in a bad spot. Because she has one spell that does all this AoE damage on every single one of those minions. Whereas you have one spell that can hit this. Yeah. Okay. And now I know you, you do have your Corrupting Potion going, so you'll get a little bit more, but that's not instant. She could have forced you to base already. Like, see, if she just eat all that, you were, like, she would have got the wave in a turret, and you're stuck. And how much gold do you have? You do have enough for tier. Okay. So instead of spending all of your mana on trading her, why not spend your mana on on the mini wave to go get your tier? Yeah, that would have been infinitely more valuable. Yeah, because like, like we said, we're not going to kill Lux right now. Now with your yeah. mana pool. Like, look. Boom, boom, you're out of mana. But that's fine now, because your jungle is around. Yeah, I tend to use also, uh, I often use Corrupting Potions uh, just for the mana aspect if I feel comfortable enough, such as I do right now. Okay, you have wave control now. You need to walk up and stop her base. Oh, okay. Or, you need to look at the mini wave and decide very, very, very quickly what you're going to do. Are you going to walk up. here and just base immediately? I would. I actually think I made a huge mistake here, but I think I uh, pushed a bit too slowly, so I gave her uh, like one and a half minion waves uh, by the two uh, sort of cliffs where the ranged minions are standing, her ranged minions. If I recall correctly. Okay. Which is awful. Yeah, so like I was getting to, there's two plays. You can one, for, like walk here, Q here, force her to stay. Okay, this is play one. Or, you walk here and base. This is play two. You have to decide which you want to do. Both are very fine. Like, you can do either perfectly viably. It just depends on what you want to do. Do you want to stay in the lane longer? Honestly, probably not. I want to get my tier. I, I, I want to have that stacking early, so I would base. Um, okay. But these two options... Do you know why number two is possible? Uh, because... I have more movement speed than her unless she buys boots, so I would get to the lane at around the same time. No. It's not about your movement speed. Look at the minion waves. Oh, because she has more minions that will slow push to me. She has four uh, casters. 
You have three casters. She has three melees. You have two melees. Um, see? Yeah. This will slow push towards you. She will miss this, 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 and then it will be stuck here. But if she uh, gets back before me, can she just push it and let it bounce back? No. Or is the wave too big? No, because look, she's recalling right now. You need to like look at look at the mini wave right now. Um, look at the the mini map to see the wave position of the next wave. Yeah. It's not spawned yet. So let's say she comes back in, right? This is gonna take her thirty seconds to get here. In those 30 seconds, a minion wave will spawn. And then it will run yeah. just as fast. And she can't clear these two before all of these minions get here. And you will collect. You will miss maybe at max one minion. And she will miss one, two, three, four. Guaranteed. Okay. Which means you will hit six before she hits six. And then you can stand aggressively, provided that you get vision control. And then you can try to all in her. Alright. I doubt that. I mean, you said it's not going to happen, so. Yeah. But look, see, the mini wave just spawned now. Yeah. So th this mini wave is going to beat her to the wave. So there's absolutely no way that it'll get here. And I imagine what's going to happen now is you're not going to really get this in. It's going to be frozen just outside. Yeah. So see. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. The wave could have been here, but instead you put it here. So basically, I just gave her my slow push. Exactly. You just gave her the slow push that you wanted. Yeah, and I didn't gain anything on because the uh, few golds, uh, uh, the little gold I collected didn't really yeah. equate to anything. Exactly. So now maybe let's say that that little gold was the difference between you getting a tier and a catalyst versus just a tier and um, ruby and sapphire. Okay, now it's different. Right, because it's pretty hard to freeze mid lane if you're not ahead. But if you create an advantage like that, then you're really ahead. Okay, so you need, you need to thin this wave. And what you just did, didn't really thin it. No. You just made your life I so just, hard. Yeah, I just crippled myself. Okay. Look what you just did to this mini wave. You just made one, two, three, four, five minions hard to last it. Why? Yeah. Uh, no idea. No idea. Not okay. Actively thinking about it. So again, that thing that we talked about earlier when we were in that custom game. Yeah. You want to prepare the minion waves before they come to the turret. You just actively mess them up. <laughs> okay, you got really lucky on those two minions. Honestly, those were very close. Yeah. Some is three, I think, which is three more than I should have. Yeah. Um, but look, now Lux gets a free roam, and she does something very stupid. And now this, oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> so see, she just like inted, right? Yeah. Well, imagine she's, she has a brain. You get punished there, because now your bottom line gets ganked, and you can't counter. They don't necessarily die, but they get ganked. Yeah. So she generates pressure for her bottom lane. Exactly. Okay, right now, wh what are you thinking? Uh, or actually, let me rewind 15 seconds. What are you thinking right now? Probably just... Um, oh, right, when I start pushing. You want 15 seconds back, right? Yeah. What are you thinking right yeah. now? Knowing you just um, killed a millionaire well, and what you I'm see on the map. Just, uh, because Lux is dead, uh, I can push it in and uh, like kill off as many minions as possible under tower um, to sort of take away some of her XP. But outside of that, I don't really have any sort of plan behind it. Okay, why not? Why do you not have a plan? Uh, I mean, I'm not actively thinking. Right now, so I, so right I, now I is really your opportunity to actively think. So I'm not. I'm not saying what. What did you think in game? What are you thinking right now? All right. Uh, 
Well, just from looking at it, I feel like I'm doing what I should be by pushing it in. Yes. Uh, to cripple her. Um, and outside of that, I'd probably just back just to get some items because I have recall timing. You're not going to have enough for your blasting wand. What are you going to get? A uh, ruby sapphire. Does that matter? Probably not. Probably not. Okay. Uh, so, so let's look at the information on the map right now. Okay, because this is something that you can do, like, in retrospect, even. Do you ever use these portraits? Uh, yeah, I use, uh, well, uh, I tab to watch uh, for uh, summoners, for the most part. Okay, you should be looking at these portraits. These are so helpful. Um, ideally, you put your camera over here to see Udir's bars, because you're not going to see them if you don't put it there. Um, yeah. Okay, so, so what I would do exactly right now is I would auto-e this minion. And then I would do this with my camera. Look at this. I would look down here. I would get all the information that I can get so that I can make a quick educated decision. Can I dive top lane? Probably. Yeah, that is diveable. Can I go bottom lane? Are we going to get anything if I go bottom lane? Not really. Probably not. Where's their jungler right now? No idea. Why do you not know? But you should know. It's seven minutes, so it's probably at his blue. Okay, so let's check. He should be bottom side jungle. Look where he is. I, I can't see him. He's bottom side jungle. Okay, good. He he is about to be in your try. Oh, so wait, my try? Yeah. What? Your try bush in bottom lane. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I, I yeah, your portrait's in the way. Yeah. Um, so if you just synthesize all the information, and the only reason I just checked Gragas was to confirm with to show you, like, that's actually where he is. Yeah. With all the information that I just gathered, what am I going to do? Like I said, I'm going to kill this minion, gather information, push this wave, and go topside. Okay. Does me getting five autos on this turret matter? Yes, it does. However, I have a I have a greater potential gain by going top lane. Okay, so so yeah. put so you push this wave in. Okay, so we'll go ahead and you do that. Okay, so we go ahead and do that. We push it in. Lux is about here right now. Oh, even okay, so she must have been an AFK in base. <laughs> Okay, so she should have been about here, um, in between here by now. And you have exactly 25 seconds right now to do something before Lux can respond to you. Yeah. Okay, so you should do something, right? Yeah. Yeah. So instead of basing or walking backwards and like this this just wastes like three seconds instead like you know their jungler is here now walk top yeah yeah i think okay. i just wound up poking him under tower for really no game do this drop a ward here drop your control ward here go top dive okay you know where Gragas is. You know Lux is going to be coming back to the lane. You know their bottom lane is bot. You have all the information in the world to make an educated play, but you don't. Yeah. Um, or, even if you don't go get vision, you can literally just walk top. Both are fine. Okay. Or, let's say top actually isn't diveable, or he doesn't want to do it. Walk here, get vision, walk here, get vision, walk back. You see how there's even three different options from here now to make an educated decision. Yeah. And they're each different, and it just depends on the scenario and what your team wants to do. Or you could even do this, blast plan over, like this, which then prevents you from getting ganked like this. Super, super, super easy things to do. It just, again, actively thinking. So you miss your Q on him, so you're wasting time, and now you get ganked. So
So now Lux has pressure for that exact same amount of time that you just had pressure. We'll see if she does something with it. Okay, so you just messed up all those minions by using your Miasma. Yeah. And if you don't, be greedy and try to get auto attacks on the turret when you know that their jungler is there. You don't lose your health bar there. You don't miss that CS. You actually do something top lane. And things are great. But because you didn't think, nothing happens. Yeah. Okay. Um, so go ahead and speed past this. What is your CS at 8? 57. Okay, so, so let's say you would have CS better under turret. Do you know how much CS you would have had about now? Um, like 65? Yeah, about 65. Why are you walking here? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, usually I'd just clear it out, uh, but uh, I have PTSD from uh, past junglers just taking the blue buff if okay. I don't come immediately. If they take it, does it matter? Not really, but your cat, um, your Casio with tear and catalyst. Does it matter? Okay, no, it, it doesn't. You just miss a cannon minion and probably two casters of experience for absolutely no reason. Yeah. We'll watch. Oh, and he gets it. And you yeah. didn't even get it. Okay, so that's unlucky, right? But like, yeah, <laughs> that that's just like stupid, right? Like you don't need to be there. Okay, so you eat your health bar, which you don't get punished for. But okay, so that was the point I was gonna bring up. Okay, so so taking trades of Cassio is fine, right? Because you have so much sustain built into your kit. Yeah. When it's not fine, is you don't have any information on their jungler. Do you know where the jungler is in nine minutes? No. I don't. Oh. He could be anywhere. Yeah. Do you know how many wards you've played this, this, played this game so far? Probably one. Zero? One or two. Z mm, I placed one or two miss that did nothing. Oh, right, right. You placed this one. That didn't do anything. So zero. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Okay. So why are you here when all of this is unwarded and you don't know where the jungler is? I guess I just instantly got the uh, got it in my head that if Lux isn't on the wave, she's probably roaming off. So I'll just push it in. So basically, I did. I took no precaution. Uh, exactly. That. So you can't assume that she's not here or here with her jungler. And I was going to say this. I swear to God, whether Gragas came out or not, <laughs> but he just happened to come out the second I was about to pause it. Okay, but further, top laner is missing as well. You need to be paying attention to that. Um, can you assume he's here now? No. Should you assume he's here now? Yes, because you don't have any information. Okay. Um, let's say you saw him base. Well, then obviously he's not there. But the important thing is we, we can just cross out a deer out of this equation. They're jungler. You have no information on him. Your bottom isn't pushed up. Your top laner isn't pushed up. Where is he going to be? Where like his highest probable chance is here or here or here, right? Yeah. So there's three places that he can be. If you wait 20 seconds, there are now four places that he can be in here as well. Yeah. Why would you overextend if you don't know where their jungler is? No reason. No reason, yeah. So let's go back to that Elise point earlier. If we see Elise and Lee Sin ganking top lane together, that means their jungler is not mid. That means you have a window to go aggressive. Let's say you're playing bottom lane now, okay? You see that your jungler is top lane ganking. What does that mean? Uh, they have no like unknown pressure in the bot lane. That means... That if you fight bottom, their jungler could be there, and your jungler cannot counter gank. Oh, right, if your jungler is ganking. Yeah. That's all right, I thought you said the enemy jungler. Yeah, no problem. Um, 
So again, you see that? How it's like, hey, my jungler's topside. I have less resources than them. I should probably not take a fight unless I know that I can win a 2v3. Or yeah. we have adequate information on where their jungler is. So for example, the mid laner dropped a ward here. And we saw their jungler was just here five seconds ago. Okay. This game, I swear to God, is just a game of information. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you get ganked. Um, what happens? Cool. Cool. Yeah, at that point, the, the poke on Lux, even though it probably didn't mean much, it was just because Renekton was pinging for a dive. Oh no, that's fine. You have full mana. You can do that then. Okay. Yeah, don't take it as like, oh wow, I just... Okay, so... I guess to clarify from earlier, just like, just because your spells only do twenty percent of somebody's health doesn't mean it's not worth doing. Ever. It's just when I completely kill all my resources for that twenty percent. Yes. Or even it doesn't have to be all your resources, right? Let's say you're you're against Vlad, right? And you're playing yeah. Lux. If you E Vlad, does it matter? Not really. It literally has no impact. Because he's just going to heal it up immediately. Now, let's say you E him, which forces out his pool for whatever reason, and then now you can QR him. Is it worth? Yes. But that's that's because Vlad is bad, right? But like if you just blow, let's say, three E's for a grand total of 20% of his health, you just wasted, like, 50% of your mana for 20% of his health. Now you have really poor wave control because you're at 50% mana compared to him. Unless you get blue buff, unless whatever, whatever. So there's all these factors that play into it, but don't take it as, like, wow, I should never trade. Because if you take it like that, the enemy will literally always be 100% health. So, <laughs> like... Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you know they're topside. So I assume this is the situation where you're like, <laughs> I might have died for no reason. Yeah, I just, I, I mean, I saw Leona and I thought, she can't stop me, at least after she missed the Zenith Blade. Uh, but I'm pretty sure Gragas was in Vision the entire time. I just didn't notice it. Yeah, he was in Vision. Yeah. So basically, I, I mean, I gave up that free kill. Yes. I was inting. Yeah, you inted. Yeah. Okay, so CS at twelve is eight or eighty. Just so far. Yeah. A little bit. I mean, for gold, it's it, that's probably about average. Okay. Okay. So. You go here, you clear this vision, right? Yeah. Where are your MIA pings? Uh, nowhere. Why not give your team more information? Sometimes I forget. Don't forget. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'm actually really good at uh, missing. No, 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 I'm not. That's the thing I'm not good at, rather. I'm good bind... at thinking if I notice something on the map. Bind it to a key. If something goes missing. Sorry? Bind it to a key. My missing uh, is on X. I have it on G. Okay. So then, yeah, just make it a habit to press G. Ev okay. All right. In that next game you play, that's got to be one of the things you do. Literally just hit G every time your enemy is missing. Even if they walk okay. back like this for a half second and you don't see them, hit missing. It'll become a habit. Um, yeah. But the other point here, why do you walk here and here for like six seconds? Uh, because I thought there might have been a chance for me to follow the, <clears throat> or to counteract the Lux to sort of salvage a kill, but I immediately realized that it wasn't going to happen, so I just turned back around. Lux is already in try. You're not going to counter gank it. Okay. Like, that's not possible, because you have to walk a good 20 seconds. Anything that's going to happen is going to happen in those 20 seconds. Push this wave, hit this turret, or go top lane. Okay, so if the... 
if the mid laner goes bottom, you have two options. You can push, you can go into their top jungle. Those are your two options. You have to decide which one. Are you going to take this turret okay. if you push? I don't know. No. I don't think so. No. How would you be able to take this turret on a push? Well, you have wave control. You set up slow pushes that then go here. And then these waves start hitting the turret. And then instead of being this much health, the wave's actually this much health. And now you can threaten the turret. And maybe it's worth. Because getting this turret against Lux, that's pretty big. Getting this turret against Victor, that is huge. Getting the turret versus Talon, does it really matter? Not really. Uh, He's going to be roaming the entire game anyway. About... What'd you say? I haven't been thinking that much about like specifically which champions get more crippled by uh, taking the tower. Yeah, so like heavy wave clear things, basically. Or low mobility. Oh, okay. Um, How does a Cassiopeia step here without this turret? Uh, she shouldn't be able to because you should have control wards here or here or here and all that kind of stuff. And then okay. it's really risky for her to step up. But uh, what I meant by like Victor and Ziggs, etc. is that um, those champions have really heavy wave clear. So... Um, like also getting the turret can getting the turret it, it becomes a pain in the ass to get that turret come 25 minutes because victor immediately oh, clears yeah. the wave yeah okay but that. but if you're against talon he can't immediately clear the wave he's going to be roaming the entire time anyway so go top look at this did you look at this no okay this is a free kill you hit you hit r he dies because he's slowed yeah so why are you not here, right? Like, <clears throat> this is wow. why first-person VODs are so important because if you look top lane, this is a free kill, isn't it? Yeah. So why don't you look top? What are you doing right now that is preventing you from looking top? Um, I guess I just looked bot and I just thought, okay, if I can't get that, then I'll just push. So I just, I, I didn't even keep in mind looking top. Why can't you do this and this at the same time? Using F keys. Actually, when I'm... Uh, oh, right. I can't hit F keys at all. I need a new keyboard for that. Okay, uh, I don't I don't use yeah, F keys I, I either. But why can't you hover here, hover here, really quickly? What yeah, do you need I, to see that's here? You only need to see their health bar and their mana bar. That's all you need to see. I, well, yeah. I mean, it, it was just uh, awful. Just uh, I should have just looked top, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so just look top, do that. Um, get a kill. Don't sit here doing nothing. Because you, Lux has roamed like three times now. You're doing nothing. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Okay, so you get that kill. Cool, use your ult just for damage. That's awesome. Even if, like, because he should have looked at you there, so that's a really good ult. Um, and you get caught. Yeah. Why don't you use cleanse? Was, uh, uh, I don't know. Still getting used to it. Okay. Um, but yeah, on the, at that point, I was ready to go out, but then I saw Caitlyn going in, so I started following her, and... I basically killed myself off that. I think the fight was fine, but you need to cleanse and you get out fine. Oh, and then you, okay. you get two kills. Um, I mean, it wasn't ideal, but you made the best out of, I think, a relatively poor situation. But you shouldn't be dead in that time. Yeah. As the game goes on, each auto on the turret is worth a lot more. Okay. Okay. So you're going bottom now. When you're going bottom, why do you still have two wards? Um, 
I guess I just felt it was covered enough when I walked down. Lux can go like this and you will not see her. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gragas didn't show top yet. Why is this not worded? Just get more information, right? Gragas, like, because right now you see Gragas. But if you walk on this path, you, ju you just drop this ward immediately. And you're on a better path. Because if you look, you want to be here, right? Yeah. Okay, so why would you walk like this and not like this? Small difference. Yeah. But though uh, this one second of travel time could mean the difference between getting a kill and not getting a kill. Walk optimally. Like, there's literally no reason not to, right? Like, it just... Yeah, I tend to use my miasma a bit uh, pointlessly. And here I just decided to try pushing with her because uh, Jin had to back. But if Jin is based, you know that Leona can't do anything. Yeah, so we just decided to take the... Like, I just stayed for the tower. Uh... Yeah, it's fine. Okay, yeah. so you just saw this ward being dropped. Yeah. You have hella balls to walk like this when this ward is dropped here. Because you know somebody's here. So why would you walk, like, near this wall? If the second I, you see this war dropped, walk. you should be pathing like this immediately. And then even yes. further, like this, on this, this extension. Because you know Lux is here. I actually think I might just get caught and die here. So that's a good You're, you're going to walk like this, you're going to get caught, and you're going to die. I can see it happening already. <laughs> Let's roll the clip. Oh no, okay, I warded. Okay, it doesn't happen. You you should be dead there. Yeah. Okay, well he dies there for you. <laughs> he took my place. Oh yeah, dodged. Yeah, I think I could have killed her there. I just, I, uh, I don't know why I stopped. I actually told um, uh, myself that like right after I uh, turned around like that was the free kill, and I die. Okay, so rewind this. You see them. Yeah. With this. Why are you here? I have... Uh, I, I don't know. I, okay, yeah. I, I really wish I could give you a good answer. <laughs> yeah, so just don't do that. <laughs> it's a good cleanse, but like... I should have flashed you, as well. So the analogy that I'm going to make here, right? You ha you're at a sawmill, okay? You have a band-aid. You're like, hey, if I get cut, I have a band-aid. <laughs> Well, guess what? You just cut your leg off. Is that bandit going to help you? No. It's not going to help you at all. So just don't put yourself in that scenario, right? Um, for all the reasons that we described earlier with information. So let's see what you do. And look at your build. Oh, yeah. I, I AFK at this point. I had to um, go check on something uh, urgent. Unlucky. So... Um, I was running around the house like a maniac. There we go. Okay, you do a really good job there of not lining up for Lux because you should see that happening. So that's good what you did there. And I imagine you did see what was happening because based on your other pathing, you would have just walked into them. Um, so that's good. Hey. Adapting. Sarah, I wanted to walk forward, but I knew Lux was there, and I, I don't know, I just... I if, just you, not to. if you don't cue this, you cue him, you eat him twice, he dies. Yeah. Like, he's already bound for a good, like, se like half a second to three-quarters of a second before you throw your cue. 
You have you have cleanse, you have alt. This is the freest kill in the world. You literally can't miss him. I miss the kill though. You you do miss the kill. Just, yeah. But like that's a free kill. Yeah. So if you use your alt there, if you Q E R E, he either dies or he lives with like three health and he flashes away and they can't push. Actually, at the like at the exact point you post, I think I was thinking about the like just flash ulting or alt flashing rather. Um, no, that's not worth but... flashing into him because you were already in alt range. There's no reason to flash. Yeah, no, but the the one you post after when they were all oh. three standing there. But, yeah, but it, I mean, uh, I have a tendency to have all of them turn around as I do that. It's a two v three, so it's not really worth doing. Okay, so why are you here? What did you just Not do sure. for your team? Really nothing. This is something I do a lot where I just um, default back to mid lane uh, yeah, so, when I don't really know what to do. So this is the thing that you mentioned earlier that you want to talk about, which is why I'm bringing it up. Why are you not on this side wave? Uh, Let me give you a list of reasons to be over here. One. Let me draw on yellow so it's clear. One. Solo <laughs> experience. Two, solo gold. Three, you do nothing mid. Four, you can actively set up a side wave. And five, I'm still thinking if there's a fifth reason. <laughs> um, yeah, like your support answers the freaking wave. Why does she yeah. need gold? Okay, <laughs> this just tilted me. Why are you letting your support answer the wave? It's AP Morgana, my friend. No, it's not. Uh, no, I just, uh, as I said, I just, I wasn't sure what to do, so I just default back to mid. But okay. now that you're saying it's obviously uh, more beneficial. Watch LCS again. Just whenever you watch it, okay, whenever. Just pay attention to when their mid laners are on the side lane. I guarantee. The second their mid laner is ahead, they're on the side lane. Do you know? Oh. Do you know the reason behind it? No. Oh yeah. Okay. That that is the fifth reason. You're strong. <laughs> Am I? As yeah, as I long know. as you're not like zero and five, you're strong enough to want. Who? Okay. If you are one versus one versus that team, who can you kill? Um, I can kill Gragas. I can kill Leona, obviously. You can uh, kill Gragas. You can kill Leona. Um, I probably can't kill Lux unless I actually dodge her, uh, all of her abilities. You have cleanse and flash. Uh, How can you not kill her? Oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, okay, okay, I can kill her as well. You can kill her. And can you kill Jin? I can probably kill Jin as well. You can kill Jin. Can you kill Udir? Yeah. And Udir, I can obviously. You kill. can kill Udir. Okay, you can one v one anyone on their team. Literally any single one of them. Go there and try to force a one v one. But, okay. Uh, like right now, uh, I can see if we have a vision on anyone, but uh, like, is it worth it even if I have no information in like river or anything? You have this covered. How are you going to die here? Oh, you meant just for that? I thought you meant going up and pushing the wave further. Well, yeah, you will push once you get information. Oh, okay. Can oh, yeah, you die like, here? How do you die no. here? The answer is you're bad if you die here. <laughs> yeah. Right, like that's the answer. Okay, so now let's let's look let's look where the wave meets. Okay, these are the items, by the way. Okay, how do you die now? There is a legitimate answer to you dying. Last cone gank. He can do this, blast cone, he can just walk. Somebody can go like this um, behind you, and you're already too far extended. So now there's a risk. So what do you do to mitigate that risk? 
You go here, you drop a ward here. How do you die now? If the enemy comes like this, the enemy comes like this. Well, if I have map awareness, I shouldn't be... You should not be able to die if you have map awareness. Because you know where most of them are, and you can go here, you can QW this, go here, recall. You now set up a side wave, you get some CS, and you force somebody else to respond to your wave. Yeah. Or you just QW here and walk back until you see more information. This is called 131. This is what you want to do. Or 41. And in 41, you don't really do it because your top laner will be the one. But 131 is like huge. Why not Leandris? He should have a Leandris for this specific game because of the exact reason that we talked about earlier for an hour uh, was they have three HP tanks. Um, oh. So this is a void Leandris game. But, um, okay. Do some more research into 131s because uh, we've already spent a lot of time, so I have to kind of breeze past it. But 131, that is what you should be doing as a mid laner. Unless you're playing, like, literally only a team fight. Okay, wait. That's that's even wrong. You should be on a side wave the second you're stronger and the turret's down. Okay. Either turret. If your mid lane turret dies, you go to a side wave. If my turret dies? Yeah, what are you going to do mid? I don't know. Die. <laughs> right, you're just going to die. Go yeah. to a side wave. One, three, one. Now, of course, if it's seven minutes, that's not the case. But, like, you know, if it's 13, 15 minutes, you don't want to be mid anymore. You want to 1v1 somebody. That's what you want to do. If you watch LCK, people pick Corky, and they go to a side wave every single time. And that's because Corky will run at anybody that they are against, provided that they have good information. Cassiopeia will run at anybody, provided that they have good information. For the exact reason that we described. Who do, you, who do you die to? 1v1. Nobody. Nobody. Okay, so we saw Leona here. Ouch. So you just like walk up and int. I'm assuming you die here. Um, uh, so you just use your flash for no reason. Um, so pay more attention to the map, definitely. And one thing that can help you with this is if you get a metronome or there's like a league video, um, just look at the map like every five seconds. Oops. And especially come late game, you need to be looking even more at the map to make an educated decision. Because if you die, your team loses. Okay, imagine if you had flash right now. Look at all those free kills. Because you dodged the damage from Gragas or whatever. So now you're you're more healthy. Yeah. So all these small things, again, I will keep repeating myself, have such large impacts on the game. Because now, you can't really go to a side wave too safely because you don't have flash. You can, you just have to be extra, 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 extra careful. Look at this top lane, lane wave. This is what Morgana set up. Okay, she probably didn't set it up. This probably happened on RNG. But this is the stuff that you want to set up. Because look, now Jin has to answer this. And when Jin answers this, you can force a 4v5. Or, let's say Lux answers it. Again, 4v5. Udir goes to it. 4v5. It doesn't matter who goes. You just force a 4v5 after you set up a massive wave. Usually around an objective. So like, so like now, instead of doing Krugs, why are you not here? Oh, yeah, I think I was running toward the uh, Udyr uh, to see if I could catch him, but it's the Udyr, so I could never catch him. Exactly. So clear this wave. Look where the next wave is. The next wave is about here. Walk up here. Slow push the next wave. Now you'll have a massive, massive, massive wave up for Baron. Did you read that, right. read that wave control document I put out? Uh, don't wait. Is it recent? Last month. Uh, probably, probably didn't. Okay, I'll link it to you. Read it, and then Thank think you. about applying it. <laughs> 
And there's TLDR, so it's like 19 pages, but there's TLDR, so. All right, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll um, look through okay. the TLDR and then probably read the rest. Right now, what are you thinking? Like right now, like not like in the past. Well, I'm thinking there probably aren't any other threats uh, too close, at least not uh, threatening to me. So uh, I can freely get off damage, but I think I back off a bit uh, to avoid CC for some reason. But yeah, the only chance for Lux to appear is through the brush uh, back you know, behind Kragus. Lux is here. Oh, shit, I couldn't even see that. Uh, well, then there's no chance for it. So basically, we can easily kill both of them. Okay. So the second this fight's breaking out, I'm looking at the map, saying, who's here? Because look, if you see somebody here, that's valuable information. If you see somebody here, that's valuable information. How do you lose this fight? You should not be able to. Yeah. Okay, so he entered. Good job, though. Thank you. Okay, that's a good stun. Cheesy just messaged you the document, by the way. Oh, thank you, Cheesy. That's a really good ward. This ward. Did you read my vision guide? No, I just <laughs> uh, started warding there for some reason. Okay, that's a really good one. Cheesy, can you pee on that one too? <laughs> hey. I put out so much information. Um, it's like, and I'm not doing that to plug myself. Like, if, if there's another valuable source, like, I'll give it to you as well. Um, but those are just basics, mainly from the laning phase. But you can apply the laning phase stuff further out. Um, so, like, hey, if you, like, if you're against Twisted Fate, do you know why this ward is so good right here? Isn't that typically where you can see him walk? to one of the side lanes to try and ult. You'll see him go like this, exactly. So yeah. now, let's say you're not against Wizard Fate, you're just playing any game. If you ward this, what information do you get? You get this, you get this, you get this, you get this, and you get this. That is so, 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 so valuable because then you see, hey, are they going to Dragon? Hey, are they going to Baron? Hey, are they pushing down mid? Hey, what are they doing? So that ward is so, so good. So I'm really glad that you did that. Hey. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what's going through my head right now, okay? Okay. And this is the stuff that you should be thinking about, okay? My jungler just died. They're around Baron. They have a massive wave bottom, and they have Jax. You see, I didn't even hover over this part, but I already know that there's a massive wave bottom because I'm just checking the map periodically throughout this VOD. By periodically, I mean like every five seconds. Yeah. Okay, Jax is caught. Lux flashes forward. Lands on a trap. You are playing so far back. It is a four versus four. For four and a half seconds. If you land a stun here, you immediately win. How can you miss stuns here? Uh, uh, you can't. Yeah. You have to make a play. Because there is a large wave bottom that they will push with, and they can pressure Baron. This is a perfect opportunity to make a play. If you have flash, which I don't know if this is accurate, but if you have flash, your ass should have been here. Flashing forward R, you win the game. Okay, I did have flash, so uh, it's accurate. But instead, you just let them walk up. And then they go to Baron, and now look, Udyr is pressuring this bottom wave. And now, Renekton teleports down. You guys are at a huge disadvantage now. Yeah, I'm failed this. I tried to pressure them off, but... 
I mean, that's like an okay ult, but like, you're like trying to 1v4 now when you could have 4v4'd before. Yeah. So you gotta, gotta, gotta take advantage of those opportunities. Um, and that ju that just comes with playing the champions more, right? Like, um, even if you don't kill the enemies there, uh, wait for a second. All right, even if you don't kill them all, then you force them enough or low enough that they can't do Baron. So that just neutralized. Okay, Jax steals it. You got so lucky, but like, yeah, and you should have lost Baron there, right? Like. Yeah, we, I mean, we should have basically lost an end of at that point. Yeah. So you get you get really lucky there, and if you make the consistently better play, you'll win more games. Yeah. So at this point, like, I usually don't spam out random stuff. I just want to finish off my Saros. So I, I sometimes do it in base, but... Uh, I tend to forget. Sorry, could you repeat that? Only one I uh, well, um, at that point, uh, I was throwing out some cues just to finish off my Sarahs. Yeah. Uh, but I often forget to, uh, you know, just throw out low value uh, abilities, especially on, let's say, Karthus, for instance, where just throwing in the mouth can um, sort of passively extend my lead. Um, if I have the Archangel staff on Karthus, which I really do, but you get the point. Yeah, using using your abilities is fine to charge your tier. That's really good. Yeah, but I, I just uh, usually uh, forget that. You might even have to make a notepad of just stuff to do during games. Like, yeah. And th that might be a thing, you know? But like, if you slowly just build habits, they'll all become habits, and you won't have to actively think about them, like I said. So like... Yeah. I play Cassio a lot. So to me, as soon as I get my tier, I'm just charging my tier. That's just a habit. Or, okay. Um, or like, you know, warding. Um, down. Um, going to ward, for example. Like, warding properly, it's just a habit now. After you do it after so many times, it just becomes a habit. So, um, yeah. build slowly onto it. Okay. You have to be close to your team there because if... if if Leona like flash alts Caitlyn, you lose the game. Right. So even though it's not a good play for you to be there, you literally lose the game if that happens. So you have to be protecting her. Okay. Or rather, I guess you don't lose, but it's like pretty damn close to losing. Yeah, we give up more than we should. Yeah. Okay, your support dies, your top lane is about to die. What are you thinking? Um, right know. now, what are you thinking? Prepare to prepare to turtle? Yeah, you better be ready for a turn. Oh, I said prepare to turtle, but sure, turn. Yeah, that's. I mean, you should be ready, because they're walking towards you. Okay. Uh, Um, you need to be clearing the wave now because yeah. no fight broke out. So you should be using your miasma there. Use your actually hit it. <laughs> just try to clear the wave, right? And you need to especially be looking at top wave because your mid wave already has traps. Right. Yeah. Why are you walking bottom? Uh, wanted to avoid the gin ultimate. Oh, okay. I didn't see the hit, the hit marker, so my bad on that. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah it's, it's okay. You are so far back. Why are you so far back? I, I don't know. I think I'm scared of the barrel. <laughs> but, like, if you get barreled, you have flash and cleanse if they do anything. If Leona, like, ease you, you just flash backwards and kill her, or you just cleanse and walk away yeah 
I don't know if this is going to make a difference or not, but like you're so far back. You know, if you're Lux, if you're Lux, this is perfect positioning. If you're like Talia, it's okay because you can get a decent wall like this. You know, if you're like Zareth, this is great positioning, but like you're a battle mage. You have to be like so close to do damage. Yeah. So look, there were just a total of, look at that, four seconds before you do any damage. And you walk into them without using your Q or your E. So you get super punished for this. Watch. Okay. 03. 04. 05. 06. Before you even cast your alt. That's a whole three seconds. Your tank's dead. Your support's dead. Why don't you just flash alt this? Or why don't you, like, walk through the barrel and Q it? Cleanse the barrel slow. Yeah. Right? Like, these are tools that you have. You have to use your tools. Uh, are you there? Cleanse you, deer stun. Cleanse something. You gotta, like, you gotta use your spells. Okay, because yeah. right now, they should be aced. Or at least three of them dead. But instead, they get what looks like a free inhib. Because you're too too afraid to do your job. Yeah. I have a slow cleanse. Yeah, it was really slow cleanse, but... Not sure what I'm doing here. Oh, never mind. <clears throat> I think I was just uh, contemplating what to build. And yeah, here I make the mistake of going for haunting guys. If yeah, you really need mistake. Void Stat before Leandre's. Yeah. Alright. So, who actually ends up winning this game? Uh, they do. Okay, that's what I figured, but... Yeah, that was, like, my uh, one idea for the game. Because I think you prefer lost games, right? Okay. Why do you not flash forward again? I did. No, 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 earlier. Oh, yeah, that, I... Um, I really look at this just... Renekton's going in you should be ready on a flash like you should be preparing to flash yeah I really he... thought they would kill him like he's stunned faster. you should be flashing right now if you kill Jin you win oh. but, like that that's just what happens you just win um yeah so there's no reason to just not do it because how, how do you lose a fight with that um you you don't um this at this point you should be killing the tanks you don't actually have to damage Jin to win this fight now yeah because he's sort of uh, out all we can do he is zoned mm -hmm. out yes so your job is no longer to kill Jin it's to zone them while doing damage to who you can. Okay, but you overextend. Like this. Um, because now you can get hit by three people. And then soon Lux. So if you're just like here. Which isn't that many pixels. But you're not in auto range of Jin, You're just forcing him away from you. You can't die. Um... You don't get punished for it. But let's say you got a crit there. Yeah. You you die because he gets a crit. Yeah, here I get pinged to not back and I just obey. 
Should probably listen to my instincts more. Okay, so what are you doing right now? I'm just, um, I don't know, trying to see if I can get something on the tower. But you're hitting Gragas. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know why I chose to hit him as the ahead of many. Okay, so you're down three inhibs. If you guys lose this Baron, the game is actually over. Instead of using this W, you need to W this. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You lose mid lane priority. Pretty sure Jin and Sir. Yeah. Why are you not ulting him? Mm, sure. I mean, it was free, so I should have ulted immediately. Look at this. Oh, immediately, right now. You know he's coming into you. Yeah. Like, for, you know for a fact he's coming to you. Do you have wards up? No, you don't. Okay. Instead of using Q, use your ult. Look at that, he dies. Yeah. I like it here and here and here. But he, he just like walks away. He literally yeah. walked into your face and you don't kill him. Right, like, you really need to use your tools appropriately. Because, you know, you could say like, oh, well, I'm only ulting one person. But if you, like, if you kill their most important member, like... Your alt is a 50 second cooldown. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, you know, um, back to the sort of point where unless I feel 100% sure about the kill, I have a tendency just to avoid ulting. Um, but I should, of course, do that. I think I die here, yeah. Does killing your deer matter? Mm, not really. What do you get if you kill a deer? Mm, nothing. You get absolutely nothing. You should be killing the minions instead. Save your nexus turrets. Super, super, yeah. super important. To answer the question in the chat, um, what percentage of games do you think that you decide? I think that you decide 20% of your games. You win 40 just because you exist. You lose 40 just because you exist. And you will win 20% based on what you do. That is my personal opinion. Okay, but now you're dead, so now you just lose the game, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we just lost the game. Like, they have like a million super minions. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. So, did I just break it? Okay. Okay. I know we covered a lot. What questions do you have now? Um, I mean, honestly, I feel like we covered uh, most of it, but um, I guess most of my questions that remain are about vision. Okay. Um, so I don't have anything like very specific. Um, but, like at what times should I look toward and where would it be valuable toward in the laning phase? Because that's often where I um, either give up a lot of kills to the jungler, um, which has to do with positioning as well. But uh, generally speaking, I don't ward enough and well enough. Okay, um, I'm going to defer you to my laning mid lane vision guide because I think that covers all of that. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah, that's um, totally the However, best thing. to answer your question, you ward where you need information. 
right? Like that's a stupid answer, but yeah, it makes ideally, sense, you get the deepest vision possible while being safe. That is the best answer that I can give you to that question. Because like where Jax is now, if I was at that position, getting the word in the brush uh, right for uh, to the red buff, like over the, the next to the blast cone. You can be there right now because their jungler is dead, your mid laner is missing, and their top laner is dead. You could theoretically be there, but you need to clear the wave yeah. first. Do you clear the wave? I don't know. Let's see. Yeah. So what? You could go ward that right now instead of auto attacking twice, three times. You get three auto attacks on the turret. None of those minions will die if you go ward. Like the answer is just when you can. Yeah, but that's uh, I mean like that's uh, a solid place for a deep ward. Yeah, yeah. So the best the best slots are covered. But like I I mean I'll, I'll draw them out again. Um, this is tier one vision here and here. You want this. This is tier two vision. This 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 I'll use a different color still tier 2 yeah um, um i uh, um where you see the control ward now I, that's probably me who placed it um the one uh on top of me um, is that just not uh, a valid place to put a word? Like, is it just uh, inherently better to have it over the edge? Well, here, let me let me go through and finish this chart really quick. Yeah. And then tier three vision is. All right, so I think those are all, pretty much all the wards that you can possibly place during laning phase. Ideally, you all get right. the yellow wards control warded. Yeah. How do you do that? You build up a slow push by trading, and then now you have lane pressure, so you can zone them off of the wave, and then you let the next wave crash, and you hard shove it, and then you go and get division. On the side, you know their jungler isn't. Let's say the jungler just gangs top, you go bottom. Okay? Makes sense. The next tier is the pink. You want a regular ward those ones. Okay. Because those are going to die immediately if those are pinks. What information does that ward that you placed give you right now? Um, Nothing is the answer. Is it gives you, <laughs> it gives you this. It doesn't cover this. Oops. Like, it doesn't cover the entire river, and that's the job of the, of that ward. If you see somebody here versus here, what does that give you? Nothing. And I would add, if you can get here, you can most definitely get here, and that ward is infinitely times better. Okay. Okay. So at that point, I should just walk the extra mile and, or make sure. I mean, it's literally an extra four steps. Yeah. <laughs> I should just slither my way to the control area. Yeah, but how how does how does an enemy jungler find that? The odds of them finding that is pretty low. Nobody walks through that bush. That's why yeah. it's tier one vision because you're gonna have it up forever. And that's why I want to control war there. Yes. Um, and then tier two is the pink ones. So I guess let me add a chart. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. 
and then tier three. Oops, that's not the same color. You want to get the highest tier possible ward. You get lower tier wards when you cannot safely get the other wards. Okay. Or when you just need information. So, let's say they're Ari. Just walk through like this. Let me draw in a different color. Um, just walk down like this. Right? Yeah. You can walk like this, drop a control or drop a ward here, so you know if she's waiting in the bush for you. That's a valuable time to get it. Yeah. Or let's say we know for a fact that their jungler is right here. You can ward just like this. Or like this. Or like just wherever. Let me make those larger. Because you need that information then. Or, you know, like Dragon. Have you ever warded over Dragon Wall? Oh, yeah. Like, that's a ward that's super valuable in laning phase. But would you do that if you, like, if you know that their jungler is top lane? Uh, no, not really. Unless, like, their mid and bot lane is missing. And we have no vision in river. Then I sometimes do because, trust me, the cheese is real. Well, right, but just the point is that, like, you see, that Dragon Ward is super valuable and super viable. But do you need it all the time? No. no. It's just for like immediate information. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So th that was the big point. Um, and then further, like, let's say your turret goes down. Warding this is really good then. You know, let's say you're against Talia. Warding this is really good. Twisted Fate. You're against Aurelian Soul. You know, all this stuff changes depending on matchups, depending on the jungler. It's really hard to just say like, oh, here's a formula for vision because it's, what do I need for this game? Yeah. It's adaptable. And then further, once you're level 9, you should have Blue Trinket. You can get this warded with 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 Blue Trinket. You can get this. 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 All those wards, they're like super, super, super valuable. Blue Trinket is something I rarely pick up, mostly because I forget. But don't forget. I, just, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, but I've just I've never gotten into the habit of buying uh, level nine trinket upgrades. I'm pretty so sure I have a blue trinket a every well. single game in Solo Queue level nine. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I haven't had one in uh, unless I'm playing like, like Galio. Games. Because then I'm I can walk wherever I want. Oh, okay. Yeah, no one can kill you. Yeah, but like because I split push so much, the one three one thing that I told you, you should be doing. Yeah. That's how you get information to split push safely with, with a blue trinket. Yeah, so that's why top laners tend to take, or tend to never change the trinket, right? No, it's because they can safely go wherever. Yeah, like, isn't that what you just said with Galio? Yeah, yeah, sorry. I thought you were saying something yeah. different. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, because they can like walk into a bush and not need to ward it, necessarily. For the most part. Obviously not all can, but like... You know, if you're Nautilus, like, pop up your shield, walk into a bush. Yeah. But if you're Vayne, can you do that? No. No. Exactly. So that's the reason behind it. Um, so does all that make sense, those wards? I guess, Actually, I didn't explain why they're valuable. Um, this ward will never die. Who the hell checks that bush? Nobody. Nobody checks it. You get vision on red buff and you get Krugs. It's like, oh, so value. Um, these wards are really good when paired together. Because then you just control the entire lane. Oh, I forgot. You can like ward this versus Zach. This is good because then you cover their entire top side because everybody is going to do this. Nobody is going to do this. And if they do, then you see them and nobody's going to do that either. Um, okay. Yes? Else? No, thank you. Um, this is if you can't get this ward, basically. It's like shitty that shitty that ward. Um, 
what else on top side? You would ward this to get information on raptors, and then if they're paddling through this again, same thing for the deep, deeper ward. Just this one is deeper, so it's harder to get to and is more valuable. Um, and all this is assuming you're even or ahead, by the way. Okay. If you if you're behind, what value does this ward give you if they're pushing this? Nothing. Literally nothing. Yeah. Vision is complex, it's dynamic, and it's difficult. Um, but having this general map should help. But, yeah. Go as deep as you can with safely, basically, is, is the answer. Yeah. That's okay. fair. <laughs> and then actually just translate everything I just said on top lane down to the bottom side. To the... Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I only covered the top side, so, like... I yeah, literally only cover the top side, but like, it's mirrored, so. yeah, it, it's relatively mirrored. Relatively, I yeah. said it's not, but you know. Um, okay. <laughs> so, what other questions do you have? I really can't think of any. Okay. I think I have enough to work on now. Cool. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and end the stream, and then I will restart it. That way, I can just upload straight to Twitch. Um, this was a good session. Actually, no, I forgot. I'm going to make a list really quick because I didn't give this to you. Um, what were the biggest things you can improve on? You're afraid. Your wave management is poor. Um, based on our conversation, itemization. Um, what else was there? Oh, your your usage of your tools. Yeah. Your W can be used just to zone, even if it does zero damage. That kind of stuff. Um, yeah, that's usually how I like to apply because I never feel like I get in range to it. Uh, so I can just use it as a zoning tool. Your CS under your but, turret, your vision control, your... Um, let me see. What, what else was there? I think this was... Pretty much it. Okay, so how do you work on these? Well, afraid, stop being a pussy, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> there, there's no, there's no better explanation for that because the only way you're going to learn your limits is if you die. Yeah. If you sit in the back and do nothing, you're never gonna learn how much damage you can take, how much damage you can output, all that kind of stuff. And then. You know, it might cost you a few rank games because you're trying to be too aggressive and then you die. But guess what? I guarantee in that next rank game, you're not going to make that same mistake because, oh, hey, you know, I just overextended when Ari had alt. That was stupid of me. But yeah. now you realize it. And that's yeah, the important I, part. Um, learn from failure. Yes. So you have to that's fail to learn this. You have to. How do you improve wave management? You learn what wave management is. Do you know what slow pushes are? Yeah. Fast pushes? Isn't that just hard pushing a wave? No. Well, that I have no idea. Do you know what a freeze is? Yeah. Do you know how many minions it takes before you can permanently freeze an enemy minion or an enemy out? Isn't it three casters? Nope. Okay, then I don't know. So see, there's a lot of stuff you don't know, clearly. So learn it. Yeah. Right? Like, learn. And then actively think about applying it. Um, and all that is covered in that guide, by the way. Um, which is why I didn't explain it all. Um, but be creative. This is one of your tools. Wave management is one of your tools. Yeah. So use it. Right? It's something in the game. Use it to your advantage. Itemization. Knowing your items. I want you to sit and read every single item description. Okay. And then I want you to go and look at what pro players build. When you're watching a stream, when you're watching LCS, when yeah. you just look up pro builds, ask yourself, why did they build that? I guarantee you'll figure it out. It's really not that difficult. Like, okay. in one game, Oriana's versus Zed. So she gets a Zonia's second item because she was behind. That's really not that hard to figure out, right? 
Whereas in the next yeah. game, oh, she's against Zed, but she's really ahead. She has like 10 kills, so she didn't build the Zonias. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Right? So just like, figure that stuff out. Learn it. Again, learn. And then apply. Right? Like, there's no drills for these two. Um, I mean, I guess you could go sit in a custom game for wave management to really, really test it out if you don't understand the stuff. But like... Um, you definitely got to learn the basics first before you try to apply that. Um, your tool usage, I think that one's just kind of self-explanatory. So I'm not going to put anything down for that because it just kind of covers everything that we're doing. Um, yeah. I okay, but well done that, so. CSing under turret. We talked about it already, but make your life easy. And how do you practice this? Um, all you have to do is go into a custom game. CS using standard runes and masteries, no spells, one auto attack per minion. Okay. If you do that once a day for a month, you will win. Or sorry, you will improve oh, your the eight CS. You will you will get eight CS a minute. If you do that once a day for a month, provided that you're actively trying to improve. Because just learning, hey, how much damage do minions do at this point in the game is really important. Do you know how much minion a damage a minion does level one? Uh, it's uh, ten damage from melee minions and casters, isn't it? It's five minion. It's five damage for melee, twelve damage for a caster. To you. Oh. That that's important yeah. to know. Yeah. Right, because then you can say, oh, can I can I not let this wave crash? Can I hold these three minions? How much damage is that going to make me take? Uh, well, it's gonna take three seconds for the wave to get here, so I'm gonna take, uh, well, what is that? Three times twelve times three. Oh, 100 damage. Is that worth it? Probably not. Okay. Um, so do that drill oh, that I just said. Super easy. I know another thing. Yeah? I forgot. Don't be AFK. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I just had to. Actually, no, there is something else, though. Wind condition. Oh. Okay. But anyway, vision control, read that guide, ask me questions, and then s apply it. Again, this is just like fundamental knowledge. It's not just like something you can like practice. Um, it's, it's just stuff that you need to know how to do. Um, and then win condition. I'm not going to write anything for this one because it's too dynamic to write something about. In this game, yeah. look at your team comps. What is your win condition? Let's see. Um, is it? Am I allowed to say killing Jin? Yeah. Okay, well, that's a good win condition. But um, I, I, I really don't know what to say. Okay, who wins early top lane? Do you know? Uh, Renekton. Okay, so your top lane is winning early, so you don't need to go there, or you can go there and you can snowball it harder. Yeah. Who wins the jungle matchup, 1v1? Uh, well, 1v1... Uh, isn't it pretty even? Gragas will win that early. Jax will win it come level 5. Okay. Okay, who has more gank pressure? Gragas? Uh, Gragas Keep that in mind. Yeah. Who wins the mid matchup, 1v1? Me. You? At all points of the game. Keep that in mind. Yeah. Who wins the bottom line matchup? Yours does. You have a ranged support. You should win. Yeah. What damage do they have? They have three tanks. Okay, Udyr does damage. Their other two tanks don't do damage, so I should literally never hit them if I can avoid it. Okay. Uh, but but back to win condition. Who scales really hard? Your team uh, scales scale, harder. Scale, Caitlyn scale, Jack scales, Morgana sort of scales. Yeah, you guys scale way harder. So if you go to Lycan, you guys yeah. win. Provided you guys don't int in the early game. So guess what? Make that a goal. Don't int. Yeah. Or... Say, hey, my teammates are going to int. I'm going to help them not int by helping them. Right? Like, these are just win conditions you need to identify. Let's say they have a least jungle now. Is your win condition level 3 to pressure around 3 minutes? If they have a least? Yeah. Yeah, then we should not be pressuring. Or like, we should not look to necessarily pressure early. Yeah. So that's not part of your win condition. Your win condition is scaling. Okay. Because if you okay, don't, you or or if you look at, let's look at their team comp and say it's Pantheon, Elise, Zed, Urgot, and like Yasuo support. 
okay? <laughs> That's a totally perfectly acceptable solo queue team comp, right? Yeah. What is your win condition? The answer is not to die to their cheese, and you just win. Yeah. Okay, build some armor, right? Like, the, your win condition is so dynamic, but if you, when you're in loading screen, think just about all that stupid stuff, just really quickly, I guarantee you'll win more games. Because it's taking information that you already have. You know for a fact that Elise is going to gank level 3. If you die to it, you are bad and you deserve to lose that game. And you will learn a lesson from it. Yeah. Okay, and then further, you are against Pantheon top lane. If you die to Pantheon top lane with Ignite, you are bad and you deserve to lose that game. You know he is going to try to kill you. You know he is going to cheese you. And if you die to it, it's your fault. Right? Like, that's not yeah. out of the norm to say. It's it's painful to admit that, yeah, Pantheon top lane, you shouldn't really hard. I mean, you should... You're going to be down CS. Hard. You're going to be useless. Yeah. But if you die and you lose the team, you and you lose, like, really hard, which then results in you losing the game because of it, you deserve that loss. It's hard to admit, yeah. but it's true. It's sad to have to admit it. Yeah, but that's how you become a better player, is saying, you know what? I made a mistake here. I need to fix it. I feel like um, I was pretty honest with my mistakes throughout this while, though. <laughs> yeah, I think so, too. But, like, you know, I'm just saying, like, in general, like, just because you're doing it now doesn't mean you're doing it all the time. So, yeah, um, you know, and it, it doesn't even have to be a mistake that costs you the game. But, like, you know, yeah, I, I inted there. I should not have died because of this obvious yeah, factor. And then you just... It's not... Go ahead. Sorry. No, you're good. Uh, yeah, it's not... I mean, it's not the best philosophy, probably, but um, basically the way I think about it is if I have a death that game, I know I made a mistake that game. Yeah, I mean, you should assume you make so, mistakes every game, though. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, um, even if I have, like, 25, 1 in 17 and feel like the one death I had was to finish the game, I feel like that death is sort of a representation of a mistake I made during the game. Mm -hmm. It was something avoidable that I can sort of look back at in hindsight. Definitely. And I would just caution you and say, even if your game was 25 and zero, you still could have done stuff better. Yeah, of course. Um, okay. So I think we covered a lot now, uh, especially now. We Do you have any <laughs> other questions? Um think of no okay so now i'm gonna restart my stream unless you have questions oh oh okay okay you got one <clears throat> um I, I like the the i should probably learn like varieties of champions and so on but uh right now i'm sticking with battle mages is there any other mage besides rise because i'm not playing rise that you could recommend me try out no I am not going to give you a champion recommendation other than don't pick a hard champion if you're not going to play them a lot. Okay. Okay, so like, if I, if in two weeks I look at your OPGD and you have like 15 Swain games, I'm going to be pissed. Okay, <laughs> there's no reason to pick more champions. Okay, you can climb with literally any champion. Stop blaming the champion. I'm not saying you are, but to anybody else. Yeah. When people are like, wow, what's the best mid on this patch? It literally doesn't matter. If you're below, like... Like, D1. <laughs> it literally does not matter what mid you pick. Like, at all. Okay. As long as you are good at your champion. Because, look at... Okay. Did you notice? You wanted to talk about Lux. I talked only a little bit about Lux. And I talked more about general concepts of the game. You notice yeah. that? Okay. That's because the matchup didn't matter. It was just the fact that you needed to recognize that you're stronger than her in a 1v1. And yeah. the stuff that applies to Lux applies to other mages as well. Don't stand in your minions. Right? Like... Um, yeah, like Zareth, Ziggs. Yeah, if you, if, you, if you put that as Zareth, Ziggs, Victor, Talia, um, Orianna, she's getting double value on any champion. So it's all about these fundamentals that you need to build up, not, hey, how do I win Lux versus Cass? Yeah. Because you can win the matchup all you want, but... If you don't know what to do after you win, it doesn't matter. Okay. Right. Um, so I hope that was a good answer. Um, and I know it's a, an yeah. answer you don't want to hear, but like, no, it's <laughs> that's the answer. real answer. Oh. 
I'll probably be uh, getting back to you with an say flat three. So, um... <laughs> dude, I believe, I believe in the yeah, climb. Uh, so okay. about two weeks from now, I'll see you. Sure, I'm gonna restart this vod now, though. Okay, so we can keep talking, but I gotta restart it. It's okay, I'm restarting stream, guys. I will be right back.